On the other side of the world, Europe is on the edge. NATO allies are on high alert. They've launched one of their biggest naval exercises. At least 30 NATO vessels are involved. 4,000 military personnel are participating. And what is their goal? To protect undersea cables. I'm talking about cables that run deep beneath the waters. They're increasingly coming under attack, so NATO is stepping up patrols to protect them and deploying more military assets. Remember, these undersea cables are extremely vital. The world economy runs on them. They power telecommunications. They also transport electricity and gas. Those same cables are now under attack. Last month, two undersea cables in the Baltic Sea were snapped. These were fiber optic cables. They enable cross-border internet connectivity. One cable that was attacked connects Finland to Germany. The other links Lithuania and Sweden. Thankfully, this did not lead to widespread disruption, but for some time, internet speeds across Europe dipped. Now, this incident has sparked concerns. Europe believes that this was a deliberate act of sabotage. We are now also experiencing this in Germany, geographically at the heart of the European Union, so to speak, with cyber attacks, observation, and spying on critical infrastructure. Suddenly, parcels that are supposed to be transported in airplanes are exploding. And yesterday, as you mentioned, a data cable between Finland and Germany, and probably also affecting Sweden, broke down. None of this can just be a coincidence. So who tried to cut Europe's internet? The Europeans suspect a Chinese hand. They investigated a ship, the Yi Peng 3. That's the name of the ship. It's a commercial vessel. It left from Russian shores and traveled all the way to the Baltics. It was moving quite slowly, and this is what raised suspicions in Europe. Reports say that the ship was dragging its anchor on the seabed. And that's why it was moving slowly, and that's how the cables got damaged. The ship's anchor snapped them apart. There was high drama after that. For several days, the ship remained docked in the Baltics. It was surrounded by European and naval coast, coast guards. At least four countries are investigating the sabotage. Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and Lithuania. And a few days ago, Sweden sent this message to Beijing. Uh, Sweden has also sent a formal request to China uh, to cooperate with the Swedish authorities in order to create clarity on what has happened. That formal request was sent to China earlier today. And we will, of course, return to the matter as soon as we have anything new to report. They expect China to cooperate. And what does Beijing have to say? Well, it hasn't challenged Europe's claims. It says it is working with its European partners. Uh, as we have said before, the communication channels between China and Sweden and other relevant parties are unobstructed. Europe has made similar accusations against Russia. Last year, a major story broke. It involved four key European nations, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Finland. They accused Russia of sabotage operations. Once again, the target was the Baltic Sea. They said Russia was sending spy ships for sabotage missions. So this blame game has been playing out for a while. Clearly, Europe feels threatened because undersea warfare could have a devastating impact. It could cut Europe off from the world, and in today's world, everything runs on the internet. So the sabotage of undersea cables could bring entire economies to a grinding halt. And this has become a growing concern. Cables are being damaged quite frequently. Around 150 cables are damaged every year now. Not all of these are acts of sabotage. Also, it's often hard to tell, because compromising such cables is quite simple. All it takes is a ship dragging its anchor over the cables. This is what hybrid warfare looks like. And Europe, by the way, is not the only target. Similar complaints have come in Asia, too. In recent years, countries like Japan and the Philippines have complained about similar disruptions. And it's not surprising. These cables crisscross the entire planet. There are more than 500 such cables across the world. They span over 1 million kilometers. They carry 99% of the world's communications. Virtually everything depends on them, from your emails to your WhatsApp calls to your instant messages, the infrastructure for global connectivity, basically. Cutting them off could plunge the world into darkness.